online in five minutes or less at mywnb.com. Experience the difference with Western National Bank. Visit mywnb.com. Member FDIC. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can. With 12 bowling lanes and the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dudley. Your home is your empire. Protect it with Empire Fence. Get a free instant quote with the online estimating tool at empire-fence.com. See an upfront estimate with no hidden fees. An Empire Fence can provide privacy and improve the appearance of your home. Keep kids and pets in or out of your yard. Increase security and add value to your property. Visit empire-fence.com now to view the stylish and maintenance-free possibilities for your home and get a free instant online quote. Let Empire Fence protect your empire. Drinking and driving causes serious harm to friends, family members, and loved ones. In 2021, 65 people were killed in Nebraska by a car crash involving a drunk driver. Do not drink and drive. By drinking less, you can still be here for your loved ones. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. This is On the Block with Strick and Austin. Nebraska Basketball Hall of Famer and nine-year NBA vet, Eric Strickland. Strickland for three! And you're going to go out of here at the Big 8 tournament champion. Middle school basketball coaching legend and Duke basketball shooting coach in his mind, Austin Orman. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America, on air and online at theticketfm.com. Presented by Nipco, this is On the Block with Strick and Austin. Welcome in to On the Block. I'm Austin Norman, joined by a Husker Hall of Famer, nine-year NBA vet, Eclipse lover, Eric Strickland. What's up, Stricky? Keeping my eyes to myself, looking straight forward. And I'm not looking up. I don't want no parts <laughs> of what's uh, going on up there. Too much sun. And uh, there's a song. I'm blinded by the, the light. light. <laughs> I don't want that. Up. <laughs> I don't no. want that part. Yeah, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. We're good. Have we talked about, just as a society, how wild it is that some sunglasses can run you like 125 bucks, and yet we buy $3 paper sunglasses to stare at the sun for minutes? Is that not crazy, though? Like, what, what are we doing? What, what are, we, are we doing? What we got going on here? All the money that you spend on those high-tech, high-level UV, uh, UV glasses don't work a bit. You just go get the old 3D version. Scam. Yeah, yeah. it's a scam. It's I'm, I'm going to start wearing 3D glasses from now on. Do it. Yeah, Please do look, it. It's going to be the coolest thing ever. That'd be incredible. <laughs> um, the real coolest thing ever is on the block. That's why we're here. We appreciate y'all being here. 402-464-5685. If you've got uh, any thoughts on anything we're talking about today, Heavy Hoops Day, we'll start with some Nebraska basketball, talk some national championship. Obviously, John Calipari to Arkansas on the 330 will be joined by Brian Munson of Husker Online to uh, break down everything going on in Husker football recruiting. Um, a guy that we talked about quite a bit, Matt Zollers, ends up committing to Missouri. I want uh, Brian's take on Missouri. Is that a new emerging sort of recruiting powerhouse in the Midwest. So plenty to get to with Brian. Um, again, 402-464-5685. If you have any questions you want us to throw out to Brian Munson, uh, hit us up on the text line or the comment section, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. All brought to you by Sarder Heyman Jewelers. All right, Stricky, some good news for Nebraska men's basketball out of the transfer portal. They added to the team today. They didn't lose from the team. They add a big man from the Summit League. Andrew Morgan, forward from Minnesota, joins the the team. Uh, just announced his commitment about an hour and a half ago or so. I think it's a good get for Nebraska. Not not overpowering, not a star. Average, you know, 12 and a half, 13 points, five, six rebounds per game, 36% three-point shooter. Watching the few highlights I could find, he struck me as an in-between of Rink Mass and Josiah Alec. A little more versatile, I think. Yeah. Um, again, just... 
this is the thing we've continued to talk about. Just be having solid guys. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're going to need a game changer. I think, Mm -hmm. I I think they're going to need a game changer. Everybody on the team is, is solid. I mean, we still haven't heard back from Rick Mass, so I can understand why you would go and get somebody a little bit more, more versatility there at the position. Uh, Because, you know, as much as I liked uh, Alex hustle, he was just a lot of limitations there at the position. This is where I was hoping, you know, Jacques would fill and and with that athleticism, or if we can land the the super athleticism of like, uh, you know, William Kyle, the third, mm-hmm. like if William Kyle, that type of athlete, and I think I sent you a video of the guy I was talking about. I can't remember his name, but he's from Vautech. The 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 guy that oh, was just leaping out of the, the rim, freak. yeah, yeah, the UCF guy. Is he at UCF now? Yeah, UCF. I thought it was uh, v, uh, Virginia Tech. No, I thought it was UCF. Okay, well, but we'll go back and check. We can check it either out. way. But anyway, <clears throat> um, just a super athletic guy, but has some skill set. You know what I'm saying? I, and that's what I think a guy like William Kyle brings. But we, we, I, I think they just need. They need obviously front court help at this point. You, you didn't lost what you lost. What three three front court guys? Yeah, in a in a single session and three and a half really because you know I think Eli Rice could play some front court if he needed to. Yeah. So yeah, it's gonna it's 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 good to get get a get. I mean, because you got a lot of space to fill at this particular time. So we'll see if they can continue to do so. We will indeed. So Andrew Morgan is officially in. Another visitor for Nebraska as well coming later in the week, Gavin Griffiths uh, from Rutgers, which I had to do some digging onto that one. I remembered him vaguely from when Rutgers came back to Lincoln. He was two of six from three on his way to 10 points. Really helped keep Rutgers in that game against Nebraska. Here's what I didn't realize, Strick. He's tall. He's gangly. Didn't really remind me of much. Okay, maybe Steve Peichel saw something. He was the number 34 overall player in last year's class, which is higher than I, I thought he would have been just, you know, a few spots ahead of him, Simeon Wilcher, who Nebraska was in on uh, towards the end a little bit as well. Um, Garway Duwall, who played a pretty good uh, role at uh, Providence. Then Jeremy Fierce, who was at Michigan state. Uh, I think he was the one that ended up getting, getting shot and had to miss some time. So this is pretty good company for a guy like Gavin Griffiths to keep. But again, to your point, Strick, where does Nebraska go for a game changer? Griffiths, Morgan, kind of role guys either nebraska needs to go get a star or here's the other option bryce williams takes that leap either he takes that leap or you're hoping that griffiths is 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 along the line of a hunter salas type Mm. where it was a was a tremendous role player where he was Mm -hmm. and then comes to another location another spice space open opportunity is available to you um, and you come in and just another level of confidence takes you to a, your game to a whole, just a whole another, another level. Um, it's, it's different in the NBA, but I can tell you how it's different in, in, in that new locations don't necessarily mean new opportunity in the NBA. Mm-hmm. So this is the difference. This is the contrast in the NBA. It's really about the coach. If the organization and the coach is behind you, there's one. it's up to you then to determine if you want to go to all-star status or go to another level with your game or just kind of stay where you are. Um, if you get the reins or the coach just gives you the green light, it's up to you then to do something with the green light that is given. I'm, I'm going to be honest. <clears throat> I've always been glad that I never ascended to that level, mm. to that all-star level. I love the game, but more so than anything, I there was times when we were like, for example, when I would go out to dinner with me, Michael Finley, Steve Nash, sometimes Dirk, and we would be at a restaurant and and you get overwhelmed, right? Or I would be with my, at the time where my stepchildren, you know, so we would go watch Dion Jr. play when he was at SMU. And it would be me and Dion sitting there just chopping it up and uh, watching the game. And all of the people would run, run to him. And I love the fact 
that even I was with him in being a maverick, that they bothered him more than me. Mm. Because I still like to go to restaurants and eat. I still like and to sit. go to the movies. I still like to go out. Yeah. And, 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 and when, I'm, when I've been out, one of the things is, is some people may look and they may just because just have kind of an athletic built body, but I'm only 6'3". Mm. So if I was 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six, it would be a different kind of look. But being that I was 6'3", I love that, that I can go and still do these things and operate with still a sense of anonymity. Cause I like life. You do. And life like So you. I was glad I didn't ascend. You know what I mean? Yeah. I couldn't imagine what it's like to be Kobe or um what it's like to be MJ. Like you you can't you can't really go anywhere. Shaq, you know, they oh. you can't go anywhere. No. You can't go just to the bowling alley if you want to just sling a couple down the uh, down the lane. You know what I'm saying? So I, I actually like that part. But that's what it is about the league mm. and the difference between, you know, in college. In college, new opportunity is new location. Mm. It's it's you go in and depending on what you earn, you can go and earn it. In the NBA, it's not necessarily all about what you earn. It's about what the coach likes, perceives, or thinks of you that allows you the opportunity to step forward. Or the organization, because the organization may just kind of, you know, block you out. Would college basketball's transfer portal be not quite as crazy college football as well? if more guys operated with that mentality of find the right coach, find the right team rather than chase the bag. Would that I would be have better? to agree. I would have to agree. And this is why, <clears throat> this is why I think sometimes you have to stand 10 toes down. You mm-hmm. have to stand 10 toes down on what you want your team to look like. If you want to bounce, you, you can just, you, Hey, I would much rather, if I was a coach, <clears throat> I would much rather play with guys that I know want to be there and care at a different level than a bunch of guys just chasing something outside of what's in this room. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would much rather lose. Like if I'm down 15, 18 points and it looks like my team is just like, they're lackadaisical. They kind of have a no nonsense, not caring type of mentality and attitude, not scrapping, not hustling. I would literally look down there, see who's got the uh, uh, Duran Duran eyes. Mm. Hungry like the wolf. Hungry like the wolf. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They, yeah, they got that Duran Duran look on them. You know what I mean? They, they, they like, yeah. And get in there and give me some scrap. Mm. And then once they get it back, I would only monitor how tired they are. Somebody's uh, on zoom the head sprint. <laughs> Uh, we're running by here. <laughs> you run by here and wave at the ticket if you get a chance. No, but no, seriously. That's what I would I would much rather do. Yeah. I would much rather go with those guys that care. Mm. I wonder if we ever start to see a shift at some point back to back to that. Recruiting is going to have to change at yeah. some point. It's already been changed by NIL and the transfer portal. Curious to see how it keeps changing. Some teams that have adapted pretty well, UConn and Purdue, they've kind of figured it out. Just one uh, five-star. In that mix, among those two teams, they're both playing for the national championship tonight. We'll break down the matchup, give our picks, and more when we get back to On the Block. If the week's been too hectic to even think about dinner, or your family can't handle one more night of leftovers, then it's time to let Hogwild do the cooking. Hogwild's family packs are one heck of a good deal for a complete barbecue meal loaded with all the smoked meats, tasty sides, buns, and sauces you need to feed your family. Order online at GoHogWild.com. Hogwild Pit Barbecue, 3210 Cornhusker Highway in Lincoln. But don't be late, we close at 8. Sick of being upsold at gyms? My guy, you're currently a base member? For $90 more, I can upgrade you to our Shred membership. For $130 more, you'll be a Swole member. And for just $300 more, you'll reach Sweat Platinum. At Planet Fitness, you'll get energy without the upsell. Never pushy, always free fitness training and equipment for every workout. It's fitness that fits your budget. Join Planet Fitness for just $1 down and $10 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends Friday, April 12th. See Home Club for details. If you're in Seward or Milford, listen up. Select Plumbing is now servicing your area with no trip charges from Lincoln. Select Plumbing works on a variety of issues for your home and business, including general plumbing, water heaters, faucet and fixture repair, underground sewer and water repairs, backflow testing, 
and more. Keep your property free from leaks and other issues. Call today for a free estimate, 402-560-6197. It's not just Lincoln, Waverly, and the surrounding area anymore. It's also Seward and Milford with no trip charges. Contact Select Plumbing to inquire, 402-560-6197. Are you looking to get into the electrical construction industry or wanting a new scene? The electrical workers of Local Union 265 are now hiring licensed journeymen and apprentices and are offering great pay and benefits. Call Mike at 402-875-1034 to apply. Start your electrical career today. Banking should feel personal, not intimidating. At Western National Bank, we're about real connections. Founded by two ordinary guys with an extraordinary vision to know each and every customer personally. Fees, they suck. Avoid all fees with Western National Bank's Compass Checking Account. No monthly fees, no minimum balances, and get this, 5.12 APY on the first $1,000. Open your Compass Checking Account online in five minutes or less at mywnb.com. Experience the difference with Western National Bank. Visit mywnb.com. Member FDIC. Not many businesses can say they've made it 60 years, but Madsen's Bowling and Billiards can With 12 bowling lanes in the biggest pool room in Nebraska, where else would you go to enjoy an afternoon or evening? There's a great daily specials like $2 Tuesdays, games of bowling, shoe rentals, draft beers, and tacos, all just $2 each. Have a delicious burger at EJ's Lounge before or after your bowling or pool session, and you'll leave satisfied. Madsen's Bowling and Billiards at 47th and Dudley. Iron High Construction is higher. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Iron Height Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and erector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Iron Height Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironheightconstruction.com where they're committed to you every step of the way. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today, expecting mainly sunny skies, and it will be a little breezy, but mild with a high around 67. Tonight, mainly clear with a light breeze, a little around 36. And tomorrow, we'll see a lot of sunshine and calm winds, and high around 69. Meteorologist Kyle Clutter for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Get rid of pesky critters once and for all with Bats to Rats. Their expert team is here to help you reclaim your home. No more sleepless nights caused by crawling critters or flapping wings. Bats to Rats ensures a safe environment for every family member. Check the website at batstorats.com for amazing offers. And if you mention this ad, you'll receive $10 off your initial inspection cost. Call Bats to Rats today at 402-781-8691. That's 402-781-8691. Bats to Rats. Where will your path take you, traveler? To seek fortune in a new career? Or on a journey to distant lands for a well-deserved vacation? Wherever you go, one distraction could spell disaster. You can change your fate, adventurer. Don't drive distracted. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Mama, there goes that man, Eric Strickland, with both of his national championship picks correct. Stricky, why didn't more people listen to you? See, that's the thing. It's unbelievable, Austin, that everybody sometimes thinks I'd just be wolfing at the chops. Mm-hmm. And You don't be. I, last year, I picked Purdue to go out when they did. Mm-hmm. This year, I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take them to I'm the rolling. bank. I'm rolling. I'm yeah. rolling this year. And listen, it was a tremendous game um, by Purdue to stave off NC State. Didn't allow Burns to go crazy. Well, mm-hmm. the old, the bigger Burns, the, right? <laughs> you know, the juggernaut, Burns. big DJ. But little little DJ went went kind of nuts. But you know, uh, Edie looked vulnerable. Mm-hmm. But it probably won't happen to the same because I'm pretty sure you kind of probably allowed just the matchup to be the matchup. Brady and, Smith was horrible in that game. And, and if he plays like that, I think in this game, it's trouble. It's over. Um, 
I, I think the matchup is 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 perfect. Mm. I think just this, it's a perfect matchup. I think um, UConn has just a little bit more dog at the position, which, you know, if, if I'm if I am to be honest, <clears throat> if I'm Purdue, I, I'm trying to think of how I would who I would put Mason Gillis on. You know, I know that that's that's something to kind of keep an eye on. Caravan, maybe they're very similar players in terms of shot profile, at least. What's um, what's his name? Spencer. No, 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 no. He's not Garden Newton. Um, Castle. Castle. Hmm. Castle's a physical. He is. He he. I, I don't I don't see anybody on Purdue outside of maybe Gillis physically that can match up with Castle. Mm-hmm. That's the one. We saw what Bama tried to do is let him shoot. Not a great three point shooter, right? About thirty percent for the year. He good. started off hot. Yeah, hot, hot, hot. Yeah. So I think UConn has probably a little more depth. Mm-hmm. Jones mm-hmm. for Purdue. He's been big for them. Mm-hmm. The the transfer. Yeah. That was a good transfer get. Huge. Because I think he gives them somebody confident that's that's willing to take shots if you decide to double. I just don't I don't think they're gonna get the double um that they they that 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 Purdue has been getting from a smaller like Alabama type. That Purdue wants to get they want. Purdue they want begs that. you to double E. He's yeah. not a perfect passer, but he can make that first read out of it and let everyone else do the work. I'm glad you brought that up because, Strick, UConn has one of the best post defenders in the country in Facts. Donovan Klingon. He has been on a roll defensively in the tournament um, in, in this season. Top 10 in the country in block rate, 12%, 7th overall nationally, um, averaging 3.5 blocks per game through five games in the NCAA tournament. That's pretty incredible. Is it as simple for UConn as hope that Edie um, struggles with someone that's actually his size because if he doesn't struggle with clinging, you have to send a double. That's where Purdue's dangerous is off of ball movement, kick out threes. Agreed. I think, I think that's why I think they're going to probably allow him to match up. Um, if anything regarding Edie, what you want is you want him going left, mm. right? No, so left. you want him turning over his right shoulder. Mm-hmm. You don't want him to get into bang, bang, drop. Drop the left, to, up with the right. Up the right. You don't want that from because that's that's dang near money. Now, I don't think he elevates enough. If you can keep body, body with no space, I think Klingon can get to those. Mm. Or even challenge them to make it difficult. And you just want to rebound the weak side. Now, here's the difference. I think... UConn crashes better than Purdue. Offensively, defensively, offensively. Both. Offensively. Okay. I think they do. I think they're very fundamentally sound defensively, but I think athletically, I think UConn can challenge them in that in that in that domain. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's who wins that. Because that's that we're gonna get into it because this is what I saw in the women's championship game mm. was a, a significant this is why I think UConn ended up dominating at the end of the day. It's pressure, pressure, mm-hmm. pressure. And then if you're not shooting, so to me, Alabama was Iowa and Iowa was Alabama mm. in a lot of ways. Yeah. So that that's just that's just an inside take for me. Here's this, Shrek. Got some numbers here. Zach Eady averaging 28 points, 15.4 rebounds, shooting 65% overall. He's also only missed three minutes. In the last three games, he's played 117 out of 120 possible minutes at 7-4, 300. On the flip side, Donovan Klingon, who we both agree is probably going to be matched up on him one-on-one a lot, be relied on a lot, has only played 30 minutes in a game three times this season. That's an incredible testament to Zach Eady, his conditioning, and really I think the way Purdue uses him is that he's there, he's a presence, you know, really consistently and Donovan Klingon's gotten in foul trouble. If he's in foul trouble, I start to worry a little bit about UConn if they can't just let him go one on one. And the reason is here. Here's the thing. Um, their depth in the position is Singari, who's a freshman size wise. 
um, Johnson, Samson Johnson. Eh. Just really, eh. yeah. Young. So, so, eh. so, so for me, you're absolutely right. Now, here's the thing: if I'm if if I'm UConn, I'm running legs. Mm. So, this is where Purdue is good at what they do because they run for opportunity, and when they're not running for opportunity, they're waiting to get. It, it's going inside out. Mm. They're 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 looking for Edie on high lows. Uh, side posts, um, misdirection posts, some form of, and, and it's rare, except they they did it against um, NC State, and it was because they were getting a lot of pressure out front, and so the pick and rolls were helping a little bit mm -hmm. in that. So I'm running, I'm run, I'm, I'm I'm running Zach Eady, like mm -hmm. I'm I'm running. So if I'm Samson Johnson. If you if you're ever in the game and if we're if we're gonna continue to rest clinging, we're gonna try to run every time down. You're running and I'm if I'm any guard on UConn's team, I'm Caitlin Clarkin looking just you know how mm. she drops dimes. <laughs> I'm looking to drop dimes like that mm. to 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 Samson for bangs, mm -hmm. and that's that's the only way you're really gonna be able to tire him out and make him not relevant. In in menial in mean, meaningful times mm -hmm. in this game, who's got the coaching edge, Hurley or Painter? Painter or Hurley? Uh, for me, Painter is more apt to be out coached. Mm. I, I, that's where they that's what's been their downfall. Is I think Painter's been out coached. I think Hurley's going to throw some stuff at him. I, I think I think they're going to throw some stuff at him, and and I think it's going to come at times where it's going to be unexpected. I think they're not going to dig, but then maybe in the second, in the second quarter, because what you want to do with Zach Eady is you want to, you want to let Zach Eady see something because if you, if he's smart enough that if he, if he sees, and then he knows this is what Alabama did. They, they, a Alabama did what I told you Nebraska should be doing mm -hmm. is you don't come on him on catch. You come on dribble because he has a high dribble. So you don't come when he's putting it down. It's the really first only time. going to his hip, but his hip's so high up. Yeah, yeah. You come when he's starting it because it takes so long to get to the ground and get mm. up. So you catch him in in mid dribble to where oh now he's got to fumble around and try to turn and do all this. This is why they were getting hands on balls. They were getting you mm -hmm. know strips and stuff like that. That's what I would do like in the second quarter. Mm. I would throw that. We would only do it in the second quarter. Then we would go back to a trap, you know, some form of a trap to give you. You got to keep him off balance to where he doesn't know where it's coming from. That's where I think he's not as good at mm. at reading those type of situations and the changes and the adjustments in those situations because that can allow a run to take place for UConn mm -hmm. and UConn when they make runs. They're dangerous. UConn has had some incredible runs, most notably that 30 to nothing run against Illinois. And I think Illinois' offense is better on the whole than Purdue's. Purdue shot it better from three, but I like Illinois' pieces a little bit more. And Strick, my brothers and I were having this conversation too. You can tell what it is that UConn does well. You can tell who the players, who the athletes are. My brothers and I were talking like, what does Purdue do well? They hit spot up threes. They're just not necessarily... An appealing watch necessarily, you know, every not gonna time break you, see, you down either. They're really not. They just yeah. it feels like they just wait for you to mess up. Yeah. They're just a little bit better than you every four minute chunk until the end of the game. That's it. It's so weird. it can't it can't be mistakes, it can't be turnovers. You can't give them multiple possessions because they're not gonna dominate you on the offensive glass. I think Gillis, if you let him get wild, he'll get in there and get some. Mm -hmm. Um, they're not gonna dominate you there. Because they want, they want to make sure they get back in transition. Because they have to account for Edie. Yep, and he's not, he's not the greatest sprinter, but he they got motor account, they, he got some motor, but they got to account mm -hmm. for him. Because Kling is not going to beat Edie <laughs> in a in a straight line. They they're both kind of lumbering mm -hmm. centers, but Samson, <sighs> he can. Mm -hmm. He's like a gazelle. So this is where I would throw different mixes out there if I was, you know, Hurley. Mm -hmm. You know, to just do, throw some different things at Purdue, and you 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 don't let them get looks. You take I I think if anything, I'm allowing the King Kongs of the middle to play it out. 
mm-hmm. for the most part. Throw some wrinkles, mix it up for Edie, but I'm letting them because I'm taking away all the other stuff. Because that's where right. they're that's where that's where they kill you. Yes, both teams. Both teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who's your pick? I went UConn. Back to back. Ooh. First time since Billy Donovan in Florida in 06, 07. They're, 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 they look like men. Okay. Grown, they look like grown folk. Okay. Out there. Play like an NBA now, team. I think, I think the, yeah, I, I, I think Castle is the, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Austin? X Factor? Yeah. Mm. I think Castle's the X Factor for them. Like, I like it. Because there's not many people, like he, he, he committed a, the dumbest foul <laughs> I've ever seen for somebody that's needed. And then, and then they ended up going and making the run without him, which you got to be lucky because he was one of their most effective players. He's mm-hmm. one of their most effective defenders. Mm-hmm. He was one of the guys that could defend DJ. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then you go and do a dumb foul. It was like, I was like, bro, are you stupid? Like they freaking need you, and you go and do something, some like dumb that. like that. So yeah, that that threw me for the loop. But you know, as long as he can stay out of trouble, he he can be a problem for we've, anything they throw at him. We've talked a lot about the Big Ten struggling in March. Yeah, they've made thirteen of the last twenty three final fours. Yeah, Mateen Cleaves, Tom Mizzo. Yeah, yep, two thousand. That's the last time they won it. The Big Ten is O of its last seven in the national championship game. Michigan State included in that. Ohio State. Um, against Florida, one of those years, I believe. Wisconsin against Duke, ultimately falling short. Stricky, UConn is good. UConn's really good. They've been basically wired to wire number one at Ken Palm. The team that's unseated them, though, has been Purdue. I don't know if I trust Purdue enough to say they, they dethrone UConn, because UConn, even against the elite teams, has been so good. They play a more modern style. Um Edie is really active on offense, just kind of sits there on defense and does enough, whereas Klingon is active on both ends. But let's play your situation out. Let's say it is Castle that's the X factor. Mm -hmm. He was so good against Alabama, especially early on. Does he have it in him again? Does he have the jumper? Is it still locked and loaded? Or is the clip empty? If he goes 0 of 7 from 3, it's not a death sentence, but Purdue's familiar with Cam Spencer. They played him at Rutgers. Um... Tristan Newton and Braden Smith are so different. I don't know how that matchup goes. I think Newton's the better player, but I don't think Smith goes one for five with that many turnovers. That's the the part. That's the one for Purdue is Braden Smith. He has to play a a top three game of his career. No question. No question. Because he was literally, and and look, Alabama, the way that Alabama did it, Austin, was so smart, is this is what you do to a point guard that's, that's so needed. You wear him out. Mm. That's what I used to do when I played. I would go 94 feet against one of the best guys. This is why Baron Davis used to always say before the game, he's like, dang, Strick, man, look, I'm tired today, bro. Like, chill out. You know, like, <laughs> like let me let, let me move around because I'm I'm going, I'm going to force you to use your legs. Mm. And and no point guard wants to in in the NBA, what? 60, what is, what is this? How many minutes is it? Six, 48. 48 minutes mm-hmm. and 40 minutes in college. Mm-hmm. No one, no point. This is what I used to do to Ohio, uh, o- Oklahoma State with, when they had Brooks Thompson. I'm mm-hmm. like, you're not just going to be able to just kind of peruse up, up up the floor at your, no, sir. You're going to use these legs and you're going side to side to side. And that's how it's going to be. That's what Alabama, um, mm-hmm. no, not Alabama, but that's what um, NC State. NC State. Yeah was mm-hmm. doing the braiding. They were mm-hmm. just hawking him, hawking him, hawking mm-hmm. him. And that takes your legs out, bro. Sure. Because you get, I used to love just being able to give it to Michael Finley. And like, if, <laughs> if, if I knew like Gary Payton was, was guarding me that night or freaking Muggsy Bogues or somebody, I'm like, here, here, you go, here you go, my boy. I'm going down to the post. I got Muggsy now. I'm going down to the post. Yeah, I'll find there. me there. <laughs> yeah. you know find me there. No, no problem. I ain't hard to find. There you go. <laughs> I'll take pretty though. Are you? We'll be split. Uh-uh, I need to know why. You can't just throw that out there and leave it. Because I need to know why. the way you beat UConn is you get hot from three. I think Klingon gets in early foul trouble. He sits. Purdue goes bombs away from three, and they hold on in the end. I think Purdue, if they're going to win it, hits at least 12 threes tonight. Sutter Hammond text line 402-464-5685. Whose debate is better? Austin Ormans 
uh, in Purdue landing their first. That's their, this would be their first, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. Their first. This is only the second time they actually got there. Mm-hmm. This would be their first uh, national championship. Do they get it done by way of his method threes, or is it fun and gun with the two monsters of the inside banging out, taking away Purdue? Who's uh, who's Way of winning, do you prefer? Austin Orman or Eric Strickland, shout us out on the 402-464-5685 Sauter Heyman text line. Thank you, Sauter Heyman Jewelers, for mm. your sponsorship of the text line. We appreciate you. But what we got to do, Austin, we got to get out of here, don't we? Got to get a break. Get Caitlin a break. Clark is Dan Marino. More next. Ooh. Hi, this is State Senator Carolyn Bozin. Education is a cornerstone to building a strong, vibrant community. I voted for the historic increase in funding for education in the legislature. As a state senator, wife, and mom, I believe Lincoln is a great place to work and raise a family. My husband Reggie and I are local business owners and understand the valuable role of education in our community. This is Carolyn Bosin, and I am asking for your vote on May 14th, paid for by Bosin for Legislature. Hey guys, it's Bill Bush. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty has opened a new location in Pender, Nebraska, in addition to their office in Lincoln. The real estate world can be confusing, so why wouldn't you want an expert helping you every step of the way? If you're looking to buy or sell farmland in Nebraska, Kansas, or Iowa, give Ethan Sorensen a call today at 402-380-0432 or visit them online at nextagrealestate.com. Next Ag Appraisal and Realty with locations in Lincoln and now Pender, Nebraska. Houses? They're expensive. And once you buy one, you're kind of stuck with it for a while. You need to make sure you get your best house for the best price. You need Ben Bleicher and his team of pros at Professional Realty Group. They'll take the time to figure out what's important for you in your dream home, and they have the expertise to find the hidden issues that could surprise you after the sale. That's professional knowledge, proactive service. We call that potential. Ben Bleicher and the team at Professional Realty Group of Berkshire Hathaway's Home Service Ambassador. Find more online at prg-ne.com. Where will your path take you, traveler? To seek fortune in a new career? Or on a journey to distant lands for a well-deserved vacation? Wherever you go, one distraction could spell disaster. You can change your fate, adventurer. Don't drive distracted. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now, they've raised wages again, and they're hiring for production operators at $24.62 per hour, which grows to $28.97 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $33.36 per hour, with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates, with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or apply, go to ContinentalJobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Ever wish you had another light switch on the other side of the room on a dark night? How much better would you sleep at night if you had a ceiling fan in your room? The High Electric Service Department is here to make your electrical what-ifs a reality. Whether you're looking to replace some outdated light fixtures or brighten up your counters with under-cabinet lighting, High Electric can handle all types of residential electrical installations and services. Give Erica a call at 402 466-6606 466-6606 or visit high-electric.com to get started. Hey Nebraska, register today for the 40th annual Cornhusker State Games taking place July 11th through the 21st in Lincoln, Omaha and other Nebraska communities. The Cornhusker State Games features 70 sports for athletes of all ages and abilities. Price increases are approaching, so register early and save. For details, go to cornhuskerstategames.com Advocating for physicians in the health of all Nebraskans, Nebraska Medical Association, a proud platinum partner of the Cornhusker State Games. Load up on meat and more this spring at the Mercado by Certified Piedmontese at 84th and Havre. This week's special through April 9th is buy one, get one free on 8-ounce flat iron steaks, limit four per visit. Also, $1.50 off all Bachan's Japanese barbecue sauces. And don't forget about lunch on Fired Up Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Locations at 84th and Havelock and 30th and Yankee Hill in Lincoln or 168th and Maple in Omaha. Get to the Mercado today for the best meat in town.
Your child was embarrassed when you arrived at their basketball game. 75% of parents or guardians report current alcohol use. Drinking alcohol can cause harm to children and loved ones. By drinking less, your child will be excited to see you at their basketball game. If you or a loved one is looking for help, find a treatment facility near you at findtreatment.gov. For immediate support, call, text, or chat 988. Brought to you by Nebraska DHHS in partnership with SAMHSA. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Jake Sorsen, if you're listening, I want this to sink in. Caitlin Clark is Dan Marino. Mm. There's no difference between the two of them. Statistically mm. elite. No rings, Ricky. No mm. rings. South Carolina got it done. So, I, I, I want to jump in the debate. Yeah. Do you want to go first? No, I want you to. <laughs> Why? Because you need to. I don't want to. People want to hear from Stricky. Okay, here's my debate. Here's, the, here's my debate on the issue. I think college is different. Mm. I, and, and here's the way I look at it. One of the greatest that even people at this point right now are still talking about is the fact that Pete, Pistol Pete Maravich is one of the best, greatest NCAA players to ever play. Mm -hmm. Look, and I'm talking about that's over Kareem, who won <laughs> what dang near a championship every year he'd been in the, in in college mm -hmm. by way of Wooden. Yeah, dominant, just that good, mm -hmm. right? That's even over him. Mm -hmm. Did Pete Maravich ever win uh, a, a championship? He did not. No, averaged forty something points a game, forty four. I without think without threes, without threes, um, and and considered one of the best to do it. Played only three years too, mm -hmm. just dominant, right? So when I look at Caitlin Clark, here's, here's where I understand, and it's where you hear Brianna Stewart and a lot of those are saying, you need one, you need a championship. Here's the thing. She took a program that in over 20 years was irrelevant and raised it to the, to the level to where they, they've accomplished multiple Final Fours. And she's dominated at the position. I venture to say that if she had... Even though they were they were efficiently efficiently uh, efficiency top team offensively, mm -hmm. but where the difference and the unique difference of what South Carolina was is across the board size. Mm -hmm. That's where they dominated. So they dominated them on the boards offensively, killed them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like I'm telling you, this game was so close that if Iowa secured rebounds and, and really and really they did it wrong because they're trying to box out super strong athletic young women the wrong way mm. sometimes you might need to face guard like you don't get the rebound like you need to push so they're trying to back into and so they were getting fouls for those or they were getting the rebounds taken from them and all of those multiple opportunities killed them so now to overcome that, what do you got to do, Austin? You shoot lights you gotta out. You got to shoot lights out, and they didn't. No. Caitlin went cold. 18 points in the first like quarter, quarter yeah. was, was going nuts. Then they, they put Raven on her, which then what, what did Raven do? Did her, just like I told you, mm -hmm. took them legs yep. because she's been playing high, high minutes mm -hmm. and was hounding her. Just mm -hmm. everywhere she went, she and got a couple of them cookies. So... I think if Caitlin has that kind of help, mm. not that they're bad, they're yeah. just them, them the ladies. When there, you, there's not a defender like that. They, they could get into anyone uh, on South Carolina. No. Like you said, the size, like you could tell it made a difference in the end of the game. That's what LSU did last year, too. Yeah. Size and athleticism. Yeah. Size, athleticism, physicality. And I don't care what you say, but if you got a bump and grind, like this is why I used to always say um, to AC Green, and I used to give them shout outs and kudos, like hand claps, because they had to bang with Shaq mm. for all the minutes that he played, which is up close with up to 30, 30 something minutes. A lot of minutes. Banging, elbows, rebounding. Roar. Like he was like the Debo of the paint. You know <laughs> what I mean? Two to the middle, raw, and ha. he's going up on something. Mm -hmm. And you're wore out. You're wore, you're wore out trying to then rebound, box him out. And that's what happens. That's what happened in this game. Caruso, right? 
That's her name, the big girl? Uh, Cardoso. Cardoso. Mm-hmm. Cardoso. Just, she's just too big. Mm-hmm. Too big. They were all across the board too big. Um, and then when they're hitting, pow, pow. Tahina, pow, pow. <laughs> <laughs> Love the name, by the way. Yeah, pretty good. When they're hitting, then they're dangerous. That's what they weren't last year. They didn't mm. have the ability. I think they shot this year close to uh, 40%. Darn near. One of the best in mm-hmm. the country. At this. So at, that's, that's what you had to face. Mm-hmm. A team that's going to beat you, bang you, and they're hitting. It's tough to win that one. My night, night. They, they got to two. They, they, were, they were there. Mm-hmm. And then you just, if you don't hit shots, because you're not getting no rebounds. No. And when they no. are, Whew. it's tough. It's impossible. We did talk about it going into the final four um, over the second I, weekend wait, of the first tournament. First of all, yeah. real quick, did I answer that, Caitlin? You did. Okay. You did great. Cool. We did talk about how it feels like it's easier for a superstar to elevate a, a women's team right now in this day and age, right? Yeah. You look at your Caitlin Clarks, your Becker, Juju, Juju um, I mean, Asia Wilson yeah. in her time as well. That's why I thought Iowa was going to have enough to get it done. I thought that would have been Caitlin Clark's parting shot that she does find a way to go off to sustain for 40 minutes. And I, I don't want to, you know, detract from what South Carolina did, but no one on South Carolina's team was as big a star or as dominant in one area as Caitlin Clark is. But South Carolina's your point streak was just a little better across the board. And I, I honestly think it was a good game plan from South Carolina and four years of work adding up on Caitlin Clark where the burden almost felt like too much once South Carolina shifted its game plan. Yeah, well, there's no doubt. I mean, after the game that you had, look, you, 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 he, she played almost the whole game, if not the whole game. I, I don't think she came out, but like maybe three minutes of the LSU game. Mm-hmm. And then UConn. Two even. days. Well, that's what I mean. I'm yeah. sorry. So LSU, LSU, LSU and the Elite Eight, then, you get then a week. UConn. Yeah. So you get a week break. So yes, UConn. Mm-hmm. I don't think she came out, but like a few minutes, mm-hmm. two days later, I don't care. Listen, when that weight and that pressure's on you and you've got and to handle minutes. and those minutes Oof. and you've got to control. Look, I don't care. You got somebody hounding you, bodying you. You've got to be the one to create mm. the opportunity. Listen, I don't care what you're saying. I don't care what type of shape you're in. It weighs on you. Mm. And I think it did. South Carolina wins. That's chip number three under Don Staley for them. Let's two out it. of the last three. Two out of the last three. Yeah. Undefeated season. And, Again, we'll and shout out. what's scary is the freshmen. Oh, they're young. They're, they're, they're mm-hmm. the ones that dang, that mm-hmm. really, if the freshmen don't play that way, they don't win. No. They, they gave them, they hit big threes, mm-hmm. big shots, created, got some extra rebounds. Um, all of them, the, the fresh, the, the, that's going to be scary. That's going to be dangerous. Okay. Um, I'm just going to play the idea here before we get to break. I have this one thought from the text line I want to get to that's just making me laugh here a little bit. Back in a sec. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM first. 93.7 The Ticket. Um, Want to shout out 2336 down in Phoenix. Notorious BIB. Thanks for chiming in. Uh, 007 and 3616 as well. Here's this from 007 on the text line strike. It's 402-464-5685 if anyone else wants to, to chime in. 007 says she isn't a big. Caitlin Clark isn't a big. Harder to control the game at the point. No, it's not. It's not harder to control the game at the point, right? We, t- we just got done talking about how good Klingon and Edie are and how they, they do dominate the college game. It's easier in the college men's game for bigs to dominate than it is in the NBA with a narrower lane, less space, right? We've been over that. But straight, we haven't just been saying this to say it. Go back and look at each of the last, you know, 15, 20 national champions, not post-dominated. Guard dominated, right? Guards have the ball in their hands more. Mm -hmm. You can run plays for post, but guards are the ones doing that creating. So no, it should be easier for Caitlin Clark to take over a game as a point guard. Well, listen, I even I even believe that that was the case even when like Brittany Griner was around. Now, listen, you've got anomalies that when you're talking at the big position like your Brianna Stewart's, like those those are anomalies because they they can create and do different things. They're like wing players that are big. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? In the mm-hmm. women's game, that, that's still that's a dominating factor. But in in most instances. It's it's guard play. It's yeah. guard play. Even even with Carolina, even with Carolina, the 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 win was the size and on the inside, but that wasn't 
the determining factor. It was Raven mm -hmm. running the point. Tessa Johnson. Tessa Johnson, getting them mm -hmm. into their stuff, making the right play, understanding, you know, time and situation, who's hot, who's not. Like, you, Raven was controlling that. Mm -hmm. Like, you could tell that she, like, she doesn't have a jumper to save her life. You know, she can't throw it in, you know, uh, uh, into a, into into a well. From a boat. In, into the ocean from a boat, into the well from standing right over it. like <laughs> she she her jumper is like broke yeah <laughs> but that's okay that's okay she but she does what she's supposed to do she played the defense and she ran the offense and she ran mm -hmm. that offense for that team the way it needed to be run yeah maybe it's a stylistic difference but i think i think the the numbers are on on our side how about this john calipari to arkansas Oof. let's break that down in hour number two just how shocked are you let us know 402-464-5685 or on the youtube stream Facebook stream, Twitter, Twitch streams as well. We see those comments. Big thanks to Starter Heyman Jewelers for the text line and video streams. Big thanks to yeah. Nebco for sponsoring the show. And Bellevue Jim, I see you. <laughs> Your boy Bellevue Jim. Your town. Yeah, he's with Stricky. He's rolling. <laughs> Hour two of On the Block rolls your way next. Constructors is now hiring for all positions with laborers starting at $23 and up based on experience. Constructors has immediate job openings for laborers, mechanics, bridge builders, operators, and drivers. Start your new career today. Constructors offers great pay, health, dental, and vision insurance, paid time off, paid holidays, and so much more. Join the crew today and be a part of Nebraska's oldest paving company dating back to 1908. For a complete list of openings and to apply online, visit ConstructorsLincoln.com. Several irrigation contractors in Lincoln go out of business every year, leaving sprinkler system orphans begging for service. The folks at Judson Irrigation shed a tear for these little fellas. They've been coddling these orphans for more than 40 years. From redesign, repairing, replacing, and restoring, remember the Judson Irrigation Orphanage. Call the Judson Irrigation Orphanage, 402-420-6277, or JudsonIrrigation.com. Ironhide Construction is hiring. They're looking for hardworking, self-motivated individuals who are team players. Ironhide Construction has openings for an experienced project manager, estimator, apprentice, skilled laborer, and a rector or installer. They will train the right people and make sure you understand the position and requirements. At Ironhide Construction, it's own it, be honest, and do it right. Apply today and learn more about their other benefits at ironhideconstruction.com where they're committed to you every step of the way. Hi everyone, Kendall Warnock, A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln. Spring is here, summer is fast approaching. With weddings, vacations, and weekend getaways on your mind, do not let car issues prevent you from getting where you need to be. Car problems shouldn't be something that you put up with. Let us get you back on the road in comfort and safety. We diagnose all makes and models from Porsches to Hondas, Toyotas, and Chevrolets. We fix a variety of issues with all of them with our talented techs and our experienced staff. A1 Automotive at 11th and L, downtown Lincoln. Always honest answers. Problem gambling is not just a financial issue. It's an emotional problem with financial consequences. If your loved one is struggling with addiction, contact Choices Treatment Center's 24-hour helpline at 402-476-2300. That's 402-476-2300. Hey, Nebraska. Register today for the 40th annual Cornhusker State Games, taking place July 11th through the 21st in Lincoln, Omaha, and other Nebraska communities. The Cornhusker State Games features 70 sports for athletes of all ages and abilities. Price increases are approaching, so register early and save. For details, go to CornhuskerStateGames.com. Advocating for physicians in the health of all Nebraskans, Nebraska Medical Association, a proud platinum partner of the Cornhusker State Games. The captain for Sean Jackson. Mike Minner. What's up, bro? When you look at Dylan, you're looking at quarterbacks that kind of come around once every 20 years. And this is a kid I'm looking at, I don't know how old he is, 17, 18 years old. And he is already directing things that a 17, 18-year-old kid should not even know. Changing the line, protecting. Okay, guys, I don't know where we've been two weeks of practice. Come on, man. Well, we got guys in the National Football League that can't do that. This is On the Block with Stricken Austin. Nebraska Basketball Hall of Famer and nine-year NBA vet, Eric Strickland. Strickland for three! And you're going to go out of here as the Big Eight tournament champion. Middle school basketball coaching legend and Duke basketball shooting coach in his mind, Austin Orman. 
Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America. On air and online at theticketfm.com. Presented by Nipco. This is On the Block with Stricken Austin. We're here, hour two of On the Block, brought to you by Nebco. If you're looking for a change in career, check them out at nebcoinc.com. They're hiring for all positions. Kentucky, hiring a head coach at some point here, because why? Arkansas stole their head coach away. That's right, John Calipari on his way from Lexington to Fayetteville. We'll get into that here in just a minute. 007, um, let me know if you're a run-the-ball guy. Because that's kind of the the vibe I get here. Um, he, he says after here, if Iowa has Griner over Clark, they probably win it all. Because with a big, you also have a huge advantage on defense. You have a huge rim protection advantage on defense. But guess what? Point guards can get steals, so the ball doesn't even get to the front court. You know, it, it goes both ways here. Yeah. And, and Strick, I want you to talk about this. He threw out Miller, Parker, and Griner as examples of dominant bigs to win a championship. Yes, no, maybe so. So here's the thing. Out of that, Griner is really the only one that was a true traditional big. Mm. She's there three years. Well, and even only, for traditional, she was different. Well, yeah. yeah. She had some. She had a skill set that was uniquely different for mm-hmm. her size. But even then, being there four years, she only she only won one natty. Mm-hmm. So if if you're that dominant, if you're that Shaq type of guy in the women's league, um, I would expect you to have more. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, skip her. Because she's the one that I think you can really only, you know, sp- specifically speak to. Brianna and, and Candace, they're anomalies. They were size. They were like, they were the, they were the Magic Johnsons of mm-hmm. the women's game. Because they could do it as like a wing or mm-hmm. a guard. They, they, they weren't traditional bigs. Yes, they posted up. Yes, they did all of those things. But they weren't traditional bigs. They Griner's the only one that you can really say that that's the case. Mm-hmm. Now, the only two bigs that I'm aware of that are just traditional bigs in the women's game was Cardosa and and her that mm-hmm. that helped lead their teams to winning natties. Um, oh, and maybe uh, back in the day, um, she's um, she was on the um, now she she's one too. She's on the uh, on the crew. Um, she played. She played for UConn. Lobo. Oh, Rebecca, yeah, Rebecca Lobo. Lobo. Yep. She was one. So there's there's a few, but in, in it's not always the case. Now, I agree with you to a to a point that it makes it diff- difficult for Caitlin Clark because you live by three, die by three, and if you're not shooting three, then you can't win with three. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. I get it from that standpoint. It's easier and better to score from the inside working out, so I get it. But I say that Iowa, if they did have a matching size big that can handle that in the paint type stuff, Iowa wins that game. That can actually size and rebound, do a lot of that stuff. Don't even have to really score. Just big body, good size, rebound, block shots, do stuff like challenge shots in the middle. Mm-hmm. That, that's really all she Cardoza really did. I mean, you, you just couldn't get to the basket. Right, but but again, you're adding this dominant big to Caitlin Clark. But if you're trading Caitlin Clark out, no, and then putting the big in, no, Iowa doesn't even they make it to make the it. final four. They don't make not it. even close. They don't make it, no doubt, because there's so many things that that Caitlin opens up or mm-hmm. made plays on that got Iowa to that point. And look, I'm not a I'm not a Iowa fan. I'm just speaking facts. Basketball. We're just yeah. talking hoop, mm-hmm. and that's the fact. The fact, Jack, is that, um. Iowa doesn't get there two years without Caitlin Clark. Correct. Doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. They just don't. No. They're they're uh they're a basic team that's fundamentally sound, just without super size. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to Fayetteville. John no, no. Calipari. Wait, 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 real quick. Wait, what you got, Stricky? Like if 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 they had like Juju from USC mm-hmm. on that Iowa team. They went hands down. They went hands down. She just needed another someone else. Dirt. She needed a, a Luka Doncic, Kyrie Irving type, so that mm. if it ain't popping over here, 
go over there. Get mm-hmm. get Kyrie that work. Right. That's the, she just didn't have that. No. And maybe Stolke can get there, but <coughs> Cardoso is better. Just just bigger and better. Bigger and better in the game. Yeah. Kentucky's been bigger and better in Arkansas for a while now. But John Calipari leaves Kentucky to be the head coach at Arkansas. Strick, as this was breaking last night, I thought it was a, a joke of a report. I thought he was holding Kentucky hostage, and I don't know what for. The man already has a lifetime contract, buyout north of 30-some million dollars, but we're still waiting on it to be finalized. But it's, you know, all but signed right now. John Calipari to Arkansas. Um, he's known some really big boosters there, not the Walton family, not the Walmart people, but the the billionaire um, heir of the Tyson Chicken Empire is a, is a good friend with John Cal. Perry convinced him to leave Lexington. Let's start with the Arkansas side of this. Is this a big coup for Arkansas? Are they hitching their wagon to an older, slower horse who doesn't have it anymore? What do you make of this from the Razorbacks end? I mean, they lose a good one. I, I you know, you, you lose a pretty good one. Um, you're not really a you're not a traditional blue blood basketball school. You're not a SEC high level football school. You have your moments. You're, you're kind of you and Mississippi State, and you know you kind of those that every now and then you pop up in the top three. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Missouri. Yeah. yeah. You're kind of like LSU. That. Yeah. You guys mm-hmm. pop up in the top three every now and then, but um, I think they're they're understanding that they're kind of they're, they they have an understanding that they're kind of stuck. Mm. in you, you have a ceiling like a uh, it, it's not it's not necessarily glass but you have a roof and mm-hmm. you can't you the ceiling just, is the roof you can't it, you can't break through mm-hmm. it's firmament it's mm-hmm. a firmament mm-hmm. up there where you can't break through yeah right and at the end of the day they're looking for that splash brother mm. soul brother number one john calipari and listen, it's mutual. It, it, it's it's not it's not just um, an Arkansas move. It's a mutual move because we talked about it last week about some of the language that John was speaking, talking to the fans, having discussions about you know his recommitment and what he's going to do and what he needs. That that's that's coach speak because you know that people are starting. There's grumbling. Mm. There's grumbling going on. So for, for me, John Keller Perry, this was an exit strategy. Mm. Exit stage left, need to make this move, make it now. Five more years. Yeah, let's do it different. Because now there's not as much pressure on you. Because if you just raise the bar at Arkansas, they, they'll leave you alone. Mm. And I think John can. I think he still has a skill set. I think people still want to play for him. I think he has a style, a way of coaching and getting the most out of guys. He's probably doesn't. He, and if he's got the resources that he's had at at, at uh, Kentucky, then I think he can still pull some stuff together. Now, you got to think about it. SEC is expanding. Mm-hmm. It's still fairly open. What blue blood in the SEC? Is blue blood now. Alabama's starting to say, you know, hey, we can jump into this void. Auburn is kind of like, wait a minute now, there's room for us. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Who else is out there? Florida Texas was there. there. Florida A-M-A. was there. Tennessee, kind of. Yeah. yeah. There's, it's open. It's mm-hmm. open season. Mm-hmm. So he's saying, okay, I'm I'm kind of, ah, they, they, they rumbling. Let me keep my name good before it gets too late. Because if he had another season like that, it, it, it looks bad. Five years since they made it to the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. And here, here's what I'm going to throw out, Strick. I, I saw this in an article. I think it's fascinating. Back in 2011, so year three of John Calipari's tenure at Kentucky, he said he couldn't see himself lasting more than 10 years at Kentucky. He says it's a big job. It chews people up, spits them out. Cal's first 10 years, um, Elite Eight, Final Four, National Championship, NIT, uh, NCA runner up, final four, second round, elite eight, sweet 16, elite eight in his first 10 years. Missed the tournament two years. That's year 11 and year 12. 13 first round exit, year 14 second round exit. This year's year 15 first round exit. He nailed it with the 10 year mark. It was an elite decade under 
Calipari yeah. for Kentucky. These last five years haven't been there. COVID's not an excuse anymore. You've Cal- had talent. You've had plenty of talent. He even adapted his offensive and defensive style. He loved playing two bigs. It wasn't working. He modernized. This was the best three-point shooting team Kentucky's had in yeah. my lifetime, at least, if not in school history. Yeah. He made those changes, still lost week one. Now he's going someplace strict where I think he feels appreciated. He didn't necessarily get along with the AD, um, wasn't able to raise a lot of NIL money. Uh, their practice facility has been the same since 2007. Which, okay, that's still pretty new, but it's also Kentucky basketball. Mm-hmm. That's the moneymaker. Don't you You invest? You put a little bit more there, but they haven't. So I think both Kentucky and John Calipari wanted this to end earlier than it did. I think Arkansas bailed him out a little bit. Facts. WTF. Mm. Facts. We talking facts. Yeah. I think he's got it. I think it's, it, it is, to me, Austin... Where you've watched the movies. We've got a guy on the line. Shout out to him, 402 464 5685. His name is 007. <laughs> We've seen the movies when the plane is looking like it's about to go down. Mm-hmm. There's an engine trouble. There's the landing gears broken. There's problems on the plane. And what do they do? They go to the parachute. And you see 007 in a nice suit. He throws, that's John mm-hmm. Calipari. It is. <laughs> you see him on the, with a nice suit on, and you just pop the door open, and he throws on the parachute, and somebody's tugging at his leg. Kentucky fan, like you son of a. <laughs> <laughs> and they're trying to keep him in the plane so that he dies with it. And pa- Calipari just took the parachute and jumped out and bailed out. And that mm-hmm. was by Arkansas. The, put, the name on the parachute said Arkansas. That's all I can say. Golden parachute, golden really. Pair, golden parachute. He had a lifetime contract yeah, at life. Kentucky. Gets a five-year deal, which I, I would guess would take him to the end of his career. He's what, upper 60s, almost 70 now, yeah. I think. So my guess is this is his last job, hence golden parachute. He'll make a little less in salary, but have plenty of bonuses. And rumor has it he's getting five mil a year in NIL. Love it. For the team. Yeah. That's huge in terms of, of roster and, and construction. Back. So... Back. I, I think it's a good move for all parties. Arkansas gets a big name that'll elevate it to a place it really hasn't been consistently since Nolan Richardson, since Nolan Richardson. was there. Musselman did some good things. I mean, two elite eights in the Sweet 16 in his five years there. I can understand why he would want to jump out to USC, though, um, get back to the West Coast. A little paperwork. Quite a bit of paperwork, in mm-hmm. fact. But let's ask this question, Strick. Who's next for Kentucky? I got a couple lists here. I just want yeah. a quick little reaction from you on each of these guys. Break it down. Okay, Dan Hurley. I like it, but I don't think they, if I'm Dan Hurley, I'm, look, you're him at Kentucky, but I like the Big East Conference. I'm from the Northeast. Right? I like, I like where I'm at. I, they love me. I love them. Why would I want to, you know, go down there and jump in the acid pool? Mm. <laughs> that Kentucky is right now. Mm-hmm. You, you've got an expanded SEC. Teams are going to get better. You don't. I, why would I want to go down there? I'm, I'm, I'm making waves right here. Yeah, I can get paid money, but you know what I might do if I'm him? Leverage. Leverage. I might go down there and just have a meet. I might just jump on the plane and just go down there and sit down with him and have a conversation, knowing that uh, yeah, yeah you can holla at your boy. You no, know, you know what could happen. Mm-hmm. I might be out. I might, and then get get an extended paperwork deal. If I'm, if I'm, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. Maybe you don't want to make make the make him mad, but you hot right now, especially if you pull off a back to back. Man, I'm on the plane. Like I, I, I'm I, I, leaving. I I'm sending the plane home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm telling my agent, yo, um, just make this call to Kentucky. Just let them know I'm interested. And we're just gonna keep this to ourselves. Really, you ain't trying to go anywhere. But at the end of the day, just make the call. I'm jumping on the plane. Matter of fact, had him send me the plane. I'm going to send my plane home. I'm going to jump on the plane, go to Lexington, and we're going to have a conversation. That's all I would do. Mm-hmm. I just sit down with him, cross my legs, have me some coffee, eat a nice meal, cut up a steak, mm. and jump back on the plane. 
what what is the the the, the president and the AD? Hey, man, what's going on? Are you all right, man? Wait, what's it? No, nah, you know, I just, just eat breakfast. A, they 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 mention a good deal for me. You know, they 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 want to they want me to do some things. But at the end of the day, I love it here. But can we make it right? <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. Simple as that. Okay, go ahead. Speaking of back to back, the last guy to do it, Billy Donovan, mm-hmm. assistant at Kentucky under Rick Pitino. Does Billy Donovan, who's kind of been stuck in the mud with the Bulls, leave that NBA lifestyle? Negative. Tricky. Negative. Ooh, that's quick. Negative. Okay. If look in the landscape of the day of college basketball and coaching, I'm not leaving the NBA. Now it's different in football mm. because it's, 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 <laughs> like you're able to you're able to leave the NFL and jump back into the into one of the two power cup. Cool, I'm all right with that. But in basketball, listen, dealing with parents, dealing with APR, dealing with NIL, dealing with ADs and chancellors and having TPs to go out and get and, uh, all the freaking stuff you got to deal. I would much rather deal with egos making and facilitating this trade. I know what my budget is <laughs> by the salary <laughs> okay. cap. Yeah. I, you know, I'm just, I go play golf. I sit down and I don't have the headache. Why do you think Teron Lou is not leaving the clip? Man, there wasn't any, there was no way he was coming to Nebraska. Like, it was not – you coach, do your thing, and you're able to just go and scout, sit down and what? Like, I'm not scouting to recruit you because I don't have to sit there, offer you a bag. No. GM up top, they offer the money. I just coach these, co- these cats. Hmm. There's, no, there's no way. Go ahead. Scott Drew. Maybe. But I think – I don't think so. I, I don't think he's big big enough. At this point, I think time has passed. Nate Oates. If I'm Nate Oates, I do not do it. I, that that's yes, that's upward mobility. But I'm I'm saying to myself, it is an open SEC. I'm now the new juggernaut in town. Why? At a football school, it's like um, it it it, it it's like the mouse, right? Mm. You know, the mouse is in the house, but. He's hiding out behind the, the couch. Or you can't really see him. Like, you, you know they're there. Alabama, mm-hmm. basketball, good, doing their thing, making runs. But you just still looking at football. And, and, and the football coach has got all the pressure compared to the basketball coach. Nate Oates and Mark Stoops have the same job. No question. Nate Oates is the basketball guy at the football school. Mark Stoops is the football guy at the basketball Fact. school. They're big chilling. Big, big chilling. Okay, Bruce like I'm, I'm chilling. Bruce Pearl, now he's got, I think Bruce Pearl has the the uh, pedigree. I think he has the charisma. I think he has the ability to do it. And I actually think that's a move for Bruce Pearl because I think there's a ceiling at Auburn. Hmm. Auburn thinks they're a football school, but they're not hmm. really. You know what I mean? Um, they hit and miss. They're not really a, a, a blue blood of anything. No. Um you're probably in the recruiting game our second fiddle. Huh, you probably right don't now. have the NIL money mm-hmm. that you would have if you don't. So if I'm Bruce Pearl, I'm, I might be looking for that parachute uh, on the 007 plane. Okay, two more. Does Rick Patino come back? Ooh. Slick interesting. Rick? Interesting. Interesting. I, I think that would be cool, but I don't think it happens. Okay, here's this last one that before we get to break. Because guess why? Guess why? It's never as good the second time. Not just that, but he's already been in the state and they ran him out right across the right across the way. True. Louisville. That did happen. Yeah. Okay, how about this one? Kelvin Sampson. Love it. Is at 69 years old right now. Does Love he it. have a year, two, three years of a run in him? And then can he hand it off to his son, Kellen? Ooh. So here's the thing. Yeah. If if I'm anybody big 12 and Kentucky comes calling with just the moolah available there. Like that now, if I'm going in, I'm I'm I am pressing for them to let's 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 step up and we we look. I'm down in Houston, baby. I I, I got more. I got better facilities. They they stepped up. And can you can you can you can you take care of me if I, you mm-hmm. know, do decide? Like I would be positioning for something like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Maybe knock a couple mil off your salary over the length I, of the deal yeah, to, to give because the, yeah. I, because really it's about the long play. Mm-hmm. I'm not really planning to get. I'm I'm trying to come here. Get y'all out of the 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 uh, quicksand mm. of NCAA death, 
Mm. the slow deaths that y'all are taking in these first couple of rounds and not being able to make make it happen. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to just get you out of that mm. and then leave it for my son. Mm. I like that play. I like that play. That's a good play. We will keep monitoring that situation throughout the week. I'm sure we will have news by the end of the week. We're going to take a break. When we get back, Brian Munson of Husker Online will join us. Lots going down in Husker football recruiting. We'll talk that and more with Brian in just a minute. NEPCO is hiring CDL drivers for Ready Mixed Concrete, Husker Concrete, and Beatrice Concrete. NEPCO offers great pay, medical and retirement benefits, paid time off, and they pay for CDL training. Apply today and start your new career with a $2,500 hiring bonus. From NEPCO's beginning in 1908, it's the employees that have formed the company's solid foundation. Start your career today. Visit NEPCOinc.com. That's N-E-B-C-O-I-N-C.com. This is Lancaster County Attorney Pat Condon reminding you to vote for my friend and colleague, Carolyn Bozen. Carolyn Bozen is a strong voice for Lincoln, who we need representing us in the legislature. Carolyn Bozen voted for historic funding for education to support our schools and for the largest property tax relief package in Nebraska history. Carolyn Bozen is the voice we need representing us in the legislature. This is Lancaster County Attorney Pat Condon. Join me in supporting Carolyn Bozen for legislature on May 14th. Paid for by Bosin for Legislature. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Bally. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. That's why as your senator, I helped pass the largest task and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. The need in our community, if you just look at the numbers, it's frightening. We're serving over a thousand kids every day. With the passion of our people, I really feel like our potential to be of even greater service to kids and families who are struggling is just unlimited. But in order to have the greatest impact, we need all the help we can get from the community. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Your Lincoln forecast for today, expecting mainly sunny skies, and it will be a little breezy, but mild with a high around 67. Tonight, mainly clear with a light breeze, and a low around 36. And tomorrow, we'll see a lot of sunshine and calm winds, and afternoon high around 69. I'm meteorologist Kyle Clutter for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Hi, everyone. Kendall Warnock, A1 Automotive in downtown Lincoln. Spring is here. Summer is fast approaching. With weddings, vacations, and weekend getaways on your mind, do not let car issues prevent you from getting where you need to be. Car problems shouldn't be something that you put up with. Let us get you back on the road in comfort and safety. We diagnose all makes and models from Porsches to Hondas, Toyotas, and Chevrolets. We fix a variety of issues with all of them with our talented techs and our experienced staff. A1 Automotive at 11th and L, downtown Lincoln. Always honest answers. Garage doors can be expensive. Are you keeping yours in the best condition possible? This is Cameron Hall with Doors Plus. Doors Plus is a locally owned business that prides itself on the fast, reliable, and friendly service. Doors Plus offers flexible scheduling so you can book an appointment that fits your busy day. My team and I will come out to your property, both commercial and residential, and provide you with the necessary information you need to make sure your garage door is in working and smooth condition. Give Doors Plus a call today at 402 590 5800 to book an appointment and learn more about our preventative maintenance plans. Doors Plus, garage doors, and more. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 937 The Ticket and the Ticketfm.com. We're back on the block. Austin Norman and Eric Strickland with you. We go to our VIP line brought to you by Allo, where they understand the importance of exceptional service with local heart. We welcome in Brian Munson of Husker Online. Brian, how are your eyeballs? You saw a nice eclipse picture. You got the sunglasses on, all protected and all that? I had the sunglasses on. It didn't help with my allergies. I'm telling oh. you, there's there's 8 billion pounds of pollen down here in Dallas right now, but... <laughs> We did. We did get a. We did get a, a chance to enjoy four mil- four minutes of total eclipse, which was. I, I honestly, I 
I didn't know what to expect. And uh, for the school districts to like, I mean, my, my wife and son were out of school today. They just canceled school. For an eclipse? Um, yeah, for an eclipse. Oh. I mean, they, they were, they, uh, Department of Motor Vehicles was banning, you know, certain uh, vehicles from driving through the county. Because just people were going to be lining the roads, and you didn't know who was going to be pulling off wherever, so it was becoming to be a safety issue. So, um, very wild, very wild. So I just kind of wrapping that one up. I I played, uh, you know, not dark yet, not not dark yet by Bob Dylan just before it went dark. <laughs> Black Hole Sun by Soundgarden, and then Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles right afterward. And the neighbors were just Stoked. loving it. So. They loved it. Did you have any patio pounders going while it was going on? Any what? Patio what? Pounders. Like, good brew. Uh, good lager. Dude, I'm working, man. No. <laughs> dude, I mean, it would have been, trust me, there would have been a, a, an adult beverage in my hand at that moment would have been, like, perfect. But it was 140, I think, when the eclipse started. 141, then we got to, like, 145. So, uh, no, nothing, nothing in that time frame. Still, still drinking a diet coke right here, right now. And, and there was nobody with the tin, actually, tin foil hats on. Well, that's what everybody was really worried about. That's what got that's what got schools canceled down here. Was that the tin foil society was going to be out all over the place, standing out on the road, you know, you know, offering up, you know, sacrifice or whatever it is that they feel like. It, I'll, I'll be honest with you, and this is me about going as far to the tin foil as I can. That was a spiritual event. What's that? Um, mm-hmm. it, it, just the eclipse itself. I, it just it, it was such a reminder about you know us as a society and the planet. Just you know just how small we really are in mm-hmm. the whole the whole ga- the whole galaxy. I mean that was just an amazing experience. Well, before we get to this last question, I'm gonna throw one more tin foil hat at you because there'll be times <laughs> where you know because my friends even cluster all of them. They they like oh strict you're a conspiracy theorist. I'm like. I'm like, listen, bro, just answer the question. Like, for example, Brian, I'll be playing golf sometimes, and I'll see the sun, right? Be uh-huh. It'll be late afternoon, but I'll see the moon at the same time. I'm like, wait, now, um, if we're – hey, look, I'm not saying nothing. I'm just asking questions. If we're if we're going and spinning and one's supposed to be on one side and one's supposed – why are they showing at the same time? Just ask me. I just help me answer that question. But I, that's my Three. tinfoil hat stuff. <laughs> reflectance from the earth back to the moon. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> okay. There you go. There's yeah. The yeah. I mean, it's, it's the, it's the same thing as like when you look up in the, in the sky, what causes it to be blue? Well, it's the water, you know? So there's uh there, there's, there's definitely, there's definitely something about, you know, with the, the way the physical properties play off of one another, but I'm telling you, it was just, it, the the fact that when the sun started peeking back out again, it was a it was a light that I could only describe as maybe like looking at a welder. Mm. It was so bright. It was just so different. And uh, yeah, just a wild experience. I'm glad I'm glad I got a chance to experience that. Brian, whenever my son has questions on his science homework, I'm sending him your way. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. I get into that stuff. No, that's wonderful. That's awesome. We also know you get into Husker football recruiting, so let's get into that for a little bit here as well. Um, let's start with uh, the last thing I saw you retweet. Emmanuel Carmo, um, he mm. released his top seven. A lot of Big Ten flavor in that list. Um, in fact, it's all Big Ten right now with Oregon and USC on that list, along with five Big Ten schools. Your your uh, your read on his top seven and who he is as a player. Yeah, Emmanuel Carmo is... Um fantastic linebacker at Robbinsdale Cooper, Minnesota, I believe Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, rangy guy, you know, like you had mentioned, a lot of big 10 flavor in his top seven, which I, I think it's one of those things that obviously it's like, you're going to get a chance to see him play, whether it's going to be in Lincoln or it's going to be in Columbus or it's going to be in, in, in Minnesota. You know, it's just a matter of where he kind of ends up right now. So, mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I love him as a player. I think, I didn't really think Nebraska had much of a chance, honestly, to, to kind of get here and, and be part of it. I think that I would look for Carmo then to be trying to, 
get to Lincoln at some point in the near future. I'm going to try to reach out to him sometime later this week to see what his plans are because he's not visited Nebraska. So to make his top seven, I think it says a lot about like what Dvorak is really doing and Tony White. And and I think that when you see those guys um, that that mention that Nebraska is like in their top list, uh, not just them, like uh, uh, um, Al Farrakhan. The, the 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 wide receiver from Houston. He's not visited Nebraska. Nebraska made his final three. So what does that tell you about Garrett McGuire and, and the effort that Nebraska has been putting forth to kind of get on his list? So with Carmo, with with Quanell, I, I I think that it just says a ton about how well Nebraska is recruiting some of these guys because they're making these top and final lists, um, and these guys haven't even, haven't even visited Nebraska yet. And and I think that that. That obviously, and, and Strick, you know this, I mean, when Nebraska gets a guy on campus, I mean, anything is possible. Those, mm-hmm. the, the facilities that Nebraska has, the, I think the, the personalities that they have as a coaching staff and, and being great communicators and having a vision and, and you know, and, and kind of where things are at, there's just a vibe. There's a vibe going on or not. I picked up on it all week last week when it came to all the other visitors that came in. And I, man, I still have, uh, I think I covered all my visitors actually last night. I got some new offers to kind of, no, I got one more visitor to, to still get done tonight. And I, all of those guys were just blown away by the staff, by the facilities, by the practice, the, the way it was set up, et cetera. Just nothing but positivity. So when you get a chance like Carmo and Farrakhan that want to get up to Nebraska, that's got them already on a list, I think it's just like this perfect storm. I think it's really a perfect storm that gives Nebraska a tremendous chance to to really make a move with those guys. Who are some of those visitors? Maybe your, your top one or two visitors that you talked to from that most recent batch that had something to say that stood out to you, Brian? I'll tell you one, and it's going to be kind of boring to some of those folks out there, but uh, there's a real reason why I'm putting him on the list, but Chase Lofton, the, mm. the tight end from Millard South, um, he's, you know, he's, he's a, he's a home state guy, number one. And uh, Nebraska was, you had to follow Oklahoma when it came to the offer. And he's, you know, he's been to Nebraska a few times and he's, it's never been kind of noticeable that Nebraska is like really caught his eye or been too, you know, amazing, you know, but, this weekend was different. He got he, he got a royal treatment this weekend. And I think that there's um, a real difference in the way that, you know, I think Nebraska and he were vibing this weekend. So I, 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 I've really kind of felt like, honestly, I said it today on Red Sea Scrolls, I, I've kind of put both the in-state tight ends, both Lofton and, and, and Ryman Zebert, um, into a category where I felt like, they may be the toughest two guys for Nebraska to keep home. And now I kind of feel like Lofton, I can kind of pull him out of that lane, put him back into, you know, more than likely would stay home, um, which is where I kind of feel, you know, like where Jackson Carpenter is at and he was there this weekend and maybe even like a Christian Jones. I still feel really good about him, but um, you know, Zebert still kind of fitting out right now. And I, I, Jamarian Parker, who is probably their, other top running back, you know, target. So if you got Connor Booth from Wahoo Bishop Duman, and you have Jamarian Park Parker, uh, who just decommitted from Arkansas a couple weeks ago when the assistant coach left, uh, the running back assistant coach left and went to TCU. I, I think Nebraska is in a great spot with Parker. Parker visited Nebraska in January when he was still committed to Arkansas. It just blew his socks off. He he was he was absolutely just amazed with everything that he had seen, and he has such a great um, uh, relationship going with Barthel, and he saw that he has a role currently, like in the room. Like he said, great running backs already there, but I'm different. I I, I can go in there and, and be a different make, difference maker for those guys if I decided to go to Nebraska. So th- those two guys absolutely stand out. One more shout out, Noah McHale, uh, top linebacker in, on the West Coast from uh, Bonita, California, or Bonita High School in Laverne, California, excuse me. Um, he uh, went from Nebraska, I think, to Notre Dame for the next visit. Uh, and just, I think Nebraska's got a really good chance to get one of his official visits uh, later on this summer. And uh, yeah, I'd go McHale and Parker and uh, 
the local guy, Chase Lofton. Those are the three guys that stood out to me this week. You also mentioned Christian Jones there. I saw he was on his official to USC. What's made you feel good about him being maybe a Nebraska lean potentially? I look, I, I think Nebraska has a very compelling uh, line to take with him when it comes to playing linebacker. Um, it's a, uh, it's it's one of those things where they don't it's it's kind of a limitless potential kind of thing. I think Nebraska is going to sell Christian Jones on the idea that they want not only want him to get to Nebraska because they see him, you know, at some spot, they see him playing a variety of positions and it's that basically that versatility that is going to get him on the field very early in his career at Nebraska. Um, I, I don't think that, you know, I mean, if you could sell that for the home state school, uh, and, and, you know, you can kind of show him that, you know, you're, you have some guys that are, that are going to do some things out of that. And you're playing in this, this tremendous defense at Tony White and the, the, the focal point of that, of that stout defense at Tony White is going to roll out there every Saturday. Um, I think that's going to be really compelling for, for Christian to kind of hear that when he gets that sales pitch together. And I talked to him while he was out there in California, you know, and he's, he's, he had a busy week last week. He, mm -hmm. he took some huge visits and uh, he still has not gotten around to kind of setting up the official visit to Nebraska or getting back over to Lincoln, you know, recently. And it's probably got a lot of people kind of wondering how it is that I'm saying this, but I, I really still feel like they're going to be able to put something together. That's going to be like, we can see you doing, you know, Sam, Will, Mike, you know, doing all these different things, you know, pinning your ears back, dropping off into coverage, you know, filling the gap, et cetera. I, I just feel like Jones has got a, he's got a different kind of skill set to him as a linebacker. We're talking with Brian Munson of Husker Online here in our Allo VIP line. Uh, Brian, I want to get your, your thoughts, too, on, on Matt Zollers. I know we just committed to Missouri. It's a name yeah. we brought up a couple times here in reference to Nebraska um, in the not-too-distant past. On the Missouri aspect of things, are, are they an emerging sort of Midwest recruiting power? Are they trending up under Elia Drinkwitz? Is Nebraska competing with Missouri much at all? Like, What do you make of Zollers to Missouri? Oh, absolutely. They're competing for, I mean, their top Nebraska's top offensive lineman has Missouri right there, you know, as, as a candidate, uh, for one of his four official visits, <coughs> excuse me, Jack Lang, uh, from, from Eureka, Missouri, very much, uh, numbers, Missouri is very much still in the picture for him. They are recruiting very well. They are, uh, when you get a Zollers to, to, to basically, you know, come over to the SEC, uh, you know, keeping him away from, uh, Penn State, and he had offers from Georgia. I mean, he had he had just some big time offers. Now you get him to go to you know basically come over to Columbia, which I think a lot of people, just like you, you know, kind of going really like is that did that really just happen? And uh, he's one of those one of those guys going to compete. You know, Elite Eleven is going to put himself on the map. Uh, great competitor, plays in a great league in, in Pennsylvania. Um, and just a fun guy to watch, you know, kind of put it together on the football field, has all the throws, very uh, just kind of that proven kind of guy, you know, extension of the coaching staff on the football field. So, um, yeah, I think, you know, they, they flipped Kawan Lacey last year. I mean, mm -hmm. Nebraska fans remember that. So, yeah, Missouri is recruiting very, very well. Um, and, and obviously they kept home the top guy last year and uh, Nwarni. And uh, I, I think that that's they're definitely building something in Columbia. So keep an eye out on that. Speaking of Missouri and Elite 11, Daniel Kalen has some ties to both of those things. We heard him speak. And the, the thing that really stood out to me, Brian, was when he was asked about, you know, being the underdog, you know, maybe in terms of perception from the outside in the competition with Dylan Riola. I thought he handled that question masterfully. I know you've talked to Daniel Kalen, you know, plenty of times. But what did you take away from his, his appearance on the podium last week? Not, I mean, first of all, handled it incredibly well, but secondly, not surprising. Um, this is a very mature individual. It's always, that's always been the first thing that's always stood out to me about him is just his approach to everything. You never got it from him that you felt like you were communicating with a 17 year old kid. I mean, he, he comes across uh, just being very down to earth. 
uh, a great communicator, you know, understands the words, understands the, the weight of the environment and can just so be so effective, you know, kind of going out there and talking through like, you know, what it is. But I, I've heard some, just some amazing, some amazing things. It's, it's a, it's a great competition between both the 2024 quarterbacks and Nebraska brought in. Um, and I think Nebraska fans should be really, really excited about that because uh, I think everybody would, have, would say, you know, coming out of Buford, Georgia, being that, being that guy like Rayola, the Rayola, the, the legacy guy, the, the big arm, the effortless kind of throw that you're going to be, you could get lost in the shadows very, very easily, but Kalen is dialing it up and he is giving his best version of him. And uh, that's exactly what it, what it's going to take. And I think Nebraska has to feel tremendous about what they've done with the 2024 class. Cause it, it extends over to the, the defense side of the football with shavers. It extends over to, to Gibson Pyle, who I've heard good things about as well. Um, there's some 2024 guys really making some noise in, in, in the spring camp so far. Last thing for you then, Brian, we'll ask you about this for the next couple of weeks here before the spring game. How's it shaping up for Nebraska in terms of visitors? Any idea on what the numbers will look like for the Nebraska spring game? Yeah, um, I think we were up to 11 um, uh, as of, oh, no, maybe it's 10. I think actually I pulled off Marcus Garcia. Mm. Uh, uh, actually, no, I haven't yet. Marcus Garcia is still on the list. Marcus Garcia is going to be announcing his decision here in the next week or so, which doesn't bode very well for Nebraska, considering he has his official visit out two weeks after that. So still stuck at 10 guys for official visitors. You can, you can totally anticipate like, you know, Jackson Carpenter and, and uh, you know, Tyson Terry and, and Caden and Connor Booth and all the other kind of in-state guys that will be around to be over there in Lincoln that weekend. And I'm sure there'll be a, a, a nice handful of other guys that are making uh, unofficial visits to come back to Nebraska during that time. But 10 official visitors at the moment, uh, let me see here. One, two, three, four, five, five of those guys, half of those guys are four star. I would say four of the other guys are high three stars. So, mm-hmm. and actually one of my favorite guys that's on the list, is the unrated one in Terry Shelton, the wide receiver from Irving, Texas. I absolutely love his film. Um, I think he's going to be tough to get out of the state of Texas, but uh, go out there and watch Terry Shelton's film, and you'll see a, a, a guy that really understands, you know, being a being a top flight wide receiver and, and can go, you know, become you know a better a better than fifty fifty guy if you put the ball up his way. There we go. That's Brian Munson of Husker Online. Check out his work of obviously HuskerOnline.com. Follow him on Twitter as well. Brian, as always, we appreciate your time. We'll keep checking in with you leading up to the spring game and beyond. Thanks a ton. Let me know about those science projects, guys. We'll see you. <laughs> sure can. There it is, our science expert, Brian Munson, also covering recruiting. Really appreciate Brian for taking his time with us here Mondays at 3.30. We'll take a break. We'll cross it over with Old School to round out on the block. Spring is here, and it's time to wake up Judson. Judson Irrigation is eager and ready to get your sprinkler system up and running for the season. Judson's technicians will check for winter damage, adjust your sprinkler heads, and show you how to set your controller for effective sprinkling coverage. The Judson Irrigation team is here for you. Stay safe. Keep summer green. Call Judson Irrigation, 402-420-6277 or judsonirrigation.com. A team succeeds when they work together. Banking's no different. At UBT, we're in your corner for every financial move you want to make. Your money's backed by a roster of experts who put in the work to know you and your community. So whether you're opening a savings account, buying a home, or planning your future, you always know who to turn to. Working together toward your financial goals, that's a win in our playbook. Union Bank and Trust. Equal housing lender member FDIC. Hi, it's Charlie Stone back with the latest update from Andy Goodyear of Honda of Lincoln. Andy, your new car selection keeps getting better and better every month. Can you tell our listeners all about it? You know, it sure is, Charlie. It's great that our customers can come in, pick out a new Honda, and drive away with it that day. How many new Hondas do you have in stock? Well, right now we have just about 100 in stock. Hey, I hear you've won some very important awards in your service department. Tell us about them. Well, the first one is we won the award for the first fixed award. So the cars are actually fixed on the very first time they're brought in. Second award is our customer service experience award. And then our third 
award is our Honda Express Service Elite, and we rank the best in quality and customer satisfaction. Maybe it's time you come experience the Honda of Lincoln way of doing business. 27th and Yankee Hill Road or online at HondaOfLincoln.com. Hey, Husker Nation, Matt Davison here with 1890. It's an exciting time to be a Husker fan, and to keep that momentum going, we need your help. Nebraska has always been a leader in college athletics, and we're doing the same through name, image, and likeness. NIL is a unique opportunity for every Husker fan to have a direct impact on the success of our programs. Through 1890, 100% of your contribution goes to the student-athletes. So go to 1890nebraska.com, choose your sport, become a member, and help the Huskers recruit and retain the best. Go Big Red. Empower a child today with the Teammates Mentoring Program. Hope is only a conversation away when you choose to share your talent, time, and heart with a child. Together, you can build a relationship based on strengths and chart a brighter future one week at a time. Find out how you can be a mentor by visiting lincolnteammates.org. Become what you needed as a kid by joining the Teammates Mentoring Program today. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Infrastructure, a veteran-owned local company proudly serving Lincoln, Lancaster County, and the surrounding areas. Bauer provides quality work at an affordable price, and they're growing rapidly. If you want to experience a career with a fast-paced, family-friendly environment, visit BauerInfrastructure.com. They have top-of-the-line benefits, year-round work, even through the winter. Bauer, usher in the new era of infrastructure to an area near you. And as always, go Big Red! Jake Sorensen here for The Body Shop. My wife is nearing her due date with our first child and has been in need of a good massage as her body continues to change and adapt. Dennis and the team at The Body Shop were incredible with the prenatal massage that she's still talking about today. I was also able to get a deep tissue massage, so it was a great bonding experience and a unique couple's massage in general. If you're in need of stress relief, book a massage today at thebodyshoplincoln.com, The Body Shop at 48th and A. One action, no matter how small, can have a world of impact on the life of a child. Cedar started because one couple believed that they could provide a child with a better life. And that belief grew into the Cedars that we know today. A powerful force for good that helps thousands of kids across Nebraska. Belief grows. Spring is here. It's time to get back outside and into proper shoes this year. Brown Shoe Fit is the place to buy this spring with their sale on athletic shoes. Get $15 off any regular price athletic shoes with respected brands like Hoka, Brooks, New Balance, and On Running. And don't forget, Brown's carries a large arrangement of sizes and widths to fit your feet properly. Start your spring off right at Brown Shoe Fit, just south of 66 and Q in Lincoln. Problem gambling affects millions of Americans daily, of all ages and walks of life. If your loved one is struggling with addiction, contact Choices Treatment Center's 24-hour helpline at 402-476-2300. That's 402-476-2300. This is former Husker and NFL linebacker Jay Foreman. For years, I've suffered from degenerative problems at both of my ankles, but thanks to a thorough and thought-out plan provided by Advanced Medical Imaging, I was able to get my life back with the least amount of pain as possible. While working through multiple options, the team of physicians at Advanced Medical Imaging were there to answer any questions I had. If you're experiencing any pain at all and want to get your life back, go to amimaging.com or give them a call at 402-484-6677. Advanced Medical Imaging, located at 7601 Pioneers Boulevard. Old school with DP and J. So I knew that it was a crapshoot with the grown up professional at the highest level. Who's going to bet? I don't know whether the starting center's girlfriend broke up with him, whether his parents have, have groceries that week. I don't know whether his roommate and him had a fight. So why would I, one, why would I want to bet on that? Uh, 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. The captain for Sean Jackson. Mike Minner, what's up, bro? When you look at Dylan, you're looking at a quarterback that kind of come around once every 20 years. And this is a kid I'm looking at, I don't know how old he is, 17, 18 years old. And he is already directing things that a 17, 18-year-old kid should not even know. Changing the line, protecting. Okay, guys, I don't know where we've been two weeks of practice. Come on, man. Well, we got guys in the National Football League that can't do that. 
This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. Now back to On the Block with Strick and Austin on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. We're wrapping up on the block. Austin Norman, Eric Strickland with you one final time. Jay Foreman on his way in. Not quite here yet. And DP is out today. So if nothing else, it'll be uh, two more hours of on the block. No, kidding. Strick, he has <laughs> to do. He's got business to take care of. Um, let's jump back to the Kentucky coaching search. Obviously, John Cal Perry, in case you missed it, on his way to Fayetteville to be the next head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Kentucky is one of the bluest of blue bloods, Mr. Strick. I mean, I saw the comparison made. The John Cal Perry going from Kentucky to, to A&M or pff, Kentucky to Arkansas <laughs> is like Jimbo Fisher in football going from Florida State to Texas A&M. Is Kentucky a, a top 10 job in college basketball? Top five best job? Where do you rank it? So I'm, I'm, I'm going to kind of be weird in this in this one. And the reason I, I say I'm going to be weird and it's going to come off as, as a weird answer. Because I think by way of the job and where it's at, Kentucky, yes, it's 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 a top tier, top five job. But in the landscape of the day, is it a job that you want that smoke? Mm. So yes, it's it's a top tier job, but is it a job? Is it a death sentence for a certain type of coach? I get you. Mm-hmm. you. You feel what I'm going? Mm-hmm. Like, for example, Shaka Smart is lucky, mm-hmm. blessed, however you want to say it, because he was able to go from little uh, in Virginia, VCU, VCU mm-hmm. did his thing there, raised the level in the bar of that program. Final four. Goes to Texas which is not necessarily a top tier basketball, but they're solid. Barnes, Barnes had that program. Pretty solid. Good. You know, mm-hmm. you got Aldridge, you got, you know, KD, uh, KD. You had, uh, uh one of my, uh, teammates, uh, uh, Ford. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, DJ Augustin. You, you, you mean, you've had some, some, some great runs, mm-hmm. but he went there because they had a lot of money, right? They paid him a lot of money. Mm-hmm. But it didn't work. No. And he wasn't terrible. He just wasn't it just didn't that work. good. Yeah, it wasn't vibing. And, and, and what's crazy about that is there are certain coaches, Austin, that are meant for certain places. Mm. Like, like, as much as I'm probably saying that they would call Mark Few, if I'm Mark Few, why would I? I've got a good thing going here. Mm-hmm. I'm in a league that... I should be able to, with who I'm recruiting, I should be able to win. I'm getting enough talent that I should put myself in a position. But now it's getting to a point where money's needed and involved Mm. that there's going to be a ceiling on Gonzaga. So, So I'm probably, if I'm Mark Few, I'm not making that jump right now. You know what I'm saying? I might mm-hmm. jump into a little, you know, kind of sneak behind the door into something else if I want to make that leap. But that that's what I'm saying. It's a death trap for a certain type of coach. Mm-hmm. You're, I think, up-and-coming, shocker smart type, good, everybody loves him. I think it's a death trap for that type of coach. I think it's going to need an established coach to be able to take the reins and hopefully move it somewhere else that mm. doesn't feel that pressure that's going to be placed upon them at the level that it's going to be placed on them at Kentucky. And I think it has to be, to your point, a guy that's been around the block, but I don't think Kentucky's getting Jay Wright off of the, the CBS no. set. I think he's comfortable with where he's at. I also think he's a Northeast guy. You know, I don't think as much as Kentucky might want him, I don't think even as good a coach as Jay Wright is, I don't think Kentucky's a fit for him. Does it have to be a guy with SEC experience? No. But it probably doesn't hurt, especially recent SEC experience. And like, nobody was groomed, so this no, isn't a Duke no, situation, right? Right. Think. Let's think about that for a second here. Duke, Carolina, and Kentucky have all been open in the last three years. For like, 
in, in that short amount of time, that hasn't happened in, in modern college basketball history. This is three of the bluest blue bloods making a change in, in quick succession. It was Carolina first. So, actually, Roy Williams steps down. So, I'm at the Final Four in, in uh, Phoenix. Frustrated whenever NC State would score. That was kind of funny for old Roy. Um, but, anyways, he steps down. Hubert Davis had been on the staff for, what, a while? Ten, five, ten years? Yeah. A while. He'd been on the, he'd been on the staff. Yeah. So, there you go. Hubert Davis. Slides Former right player. Up. They don't even do an outside search and land on Former that. player. Yeah. Been groomed. Mm -hmm. And Roy Williams probably gave him the... The salute. Right. Yeah, there he's go. him. Yeah. Okay. Same thing at Duke. Duke. Same where thing. you have... Former player. Former player John Shire, who'd been on staff for, again, another five, almost 10 years now since the end of his playing day. Uh, probably closer to eight years, I think, because I didn't realize this, Strick. John Shire got poked in the eye, and that ended his career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like tore something back there and had to have major eye surgery or whatever. Um, so that's why he stopped playing professionally. Comes to Duke... They don't even do a search. It's just, yep, handing the keys off to, to John Shire. The flip side of that is, I think Kentucky might have dodged a bullet because Louisville hired Kenny Payne. Think about if Kenny Payne was still on staff and Cal leaves. If you're Kenny Payne, do you go to Arkansas and stay, you know, second fiddle, second banana? Or is this, hey, this is my shot. I've been at Kentucky for a while. I feel like I'm building to this. I think Kenny Payne's a better coach than what he showed at Louisville. But even if he's, you know... Twice as good as he showed at Louisville. That's a problem it does for Kentucky. Yeah. So, again, I wish the best for Kenny Payne, whatever's next for him. But I think Kentucky got lucky that Kenny Payne wasn't still on staff. Little brother kind of took one for the team for him there. And I am so excited, just as a college basketball fan in general, to see a blue blood do a legit national search. Because I think Carolina could have flexed its muscle and hired pretty much whoever it wanted, if it really tried to. But it didn't try. It had Hubert. Duke, I think, probably could have, but I think Duke would have had more trouble than Carolina would have, mm -hmm. especially since Carolina and Kentucky are big public schools. That should be a little easier, a little more transparent, maybe, for that hiring process. I, it's not the same magnitude, but seeing Alabama football go through this, they didn't get their first choice. And I think Alabama football has a better claim More to its first choice mm -hmm. of any college football coach than, Kentucky. than even Kentucky basketball. So if Alabama football can't get choice one, two, or three, maybe Kentucky men's basketball won't either. I, I agree. I think it's... I, it, it, you, guys will, you guys will understand if you know, you know. This, this is a Kenny Loggins type of uh, situation at mm. Kentucky. If you know, you know. On a highway to a certain zone? <laughs> highway to a certain <laughs> zone. Like... I, I don't know how they're going to get it done. I, I I mean, I don't know if there's a person, and I won't know until I probably see who it is. Because right. I can't just really off the top of the head think about how and what direction and where they would go. Mm -hmm. well, what's so it's going to be an interesting few weeks. And they, they yeah. need to do it sooner than later. It took Alabama football 72 hours, essentially, to get Kalen DeBoer in place. Maybe, maybe 96, three or four days. Does Kentucky have a head coach by the end of the week? No, nah, because Ooh, I, I, that's I, a long time then. Here, here, yeah, because here's why this was thrust on them. I don't I, I don't think there's anything in Kentucky in the Kentucky uh, atmosphere mm -hmm. that would have thought or figured or known that this was coming down the line. Like you knew Shashevsky was on the way out. There. He you knew mm -hmm. you knew Roy was. I don't think they knew. Like mm -hmm. I, I think even Bayheim to some degree. Yeah. Yeah. You I mean, even though he's probably stayed a year or two longer than longer, probably what he yeah. wanted to, but you kind of knew mm -hmm. this one. I don't think they, they did. And this is why I think it's like a wake up in the morning and you see the alert and you're like, Oh shoot. Trev Albers. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. like this, this is why I'm kind of blown away because the, the, I, I think this happened with Nebraska. Mm. Just in a different, just in On a different football? sport. I think, yeah. I, I think the AD with Trev when that whole situation happened. I think that was that was thrust. But how quickly they were able to move, like the fact that that Nebraska was able to hire a, a president. <laughs> that I'm like, well, what what was what were we waiting on? Like mm -hmm. we we, we would have had something. <laughs> but let me, that, I'm off that. 
But that's what I'm saying. I think it was thrust on him, and that's why I think the process is going to be longer. 75-63, does Kentucky look at Tom Crean? Ha, ha, ha. No. I don't think they touch no. that no. with a 10-foot pole. Tom Crean would drop everything and move to Lexington. Oh, facts. But yeah. Kentucky can do better than Tom Crean. Yeah. Um, let's no, see No, no. Does a Matt Painter? I don't think so. I don't think Painter Matt Painter's not built. Kentucky. I don't think he's built for that. No. That's the, I think Pat B's where he's supposed to be. Could you see Painter jumping to Michigan State after Israel retires? I don't retires? see anybody in the Big Ten. No, possibly. I wouldn't see him going anywhere in state, but that, yeah. I could see that possibly. Yeah. Hmm. I don't think there's any coach in the Big Ten that would be ready for Kentucky. I heard Brett Underwood's name thrown out there and I started cackling. There's no way. No. I don't think there's a Big Ten coach ready for that. No. Um, let's do but this. I'd say, as I said before, I thought an SEC coach is. Right. Um, someone says Greg I McDermott. Mean, nope. He's no, pretty sir. locked in at Creighton. I wouldn't if touch a that with a tent hole. No. Wouldn't touch it. If I'm if I'm I got a good thing going. I've got good NIL contributions. I've got a nice stake. I'm the I'm the the big dog mm. right now in the state. I wouldn't touch it. I wouldn't touch it. No. Um, and he plays yeah. a certain style and he way, does. and it ain't Kentucky's way. No, no, it's not. Uh, what blanket says Kentucky needs an alpha personality with NBA experience. The job is made for Billy Donovan if he wants to deal with NIL. No I, doubt. I, I don't think I don't the NBA it. experience is a necessity necessarily. Patino had Kentucky kind of rolling and then left for the NBA, but he didn't have that NBA experience first. Cal had what two and a half, three years with the Nets be, between his stints at Memphis, but not like that. Helped him a whole lot necessarily. So Anybody that's yeah. had success, Austin, in the NBA space is not coming back. Hmm. Did that that happens? It can happen in football. I just don't see it in the basketball space. If you've had success, like there's no way Brad um Stevens. Stevens would Celtics ever, GM president. There's no yeah. way. There's no way he would. Why? No. It's, it just I'm telling you, I, I I've been in both forms and now I'm looking at the landscape of college. I wouldn't leave the NBA, mm-hmm. even though I don't like it. Yeah, even though I don't like it, I don't like the I don't like the the way that the NBA is right now. I don't like it, but um, that lifestyle. If you nice, go though. if you go to uh, East Strict Twenty Media, you'll see uh, something I just posted, and, <laughs> and and Austin, when I tell you it's it's a good example of why I don't like the NBA. Mm-hmm. You see, I mean, even my former teammate Dirk, I saw him doing a. Uh, I saw him doing the uh, the two step, the achy breaky heart, and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> the stuff they let them sometimes. get away with today that I know we couldn't. Shoot, bro! If I could do half the stuff they get away with, mm-hmm. we had to be sneaky to change pivot feet. Like they can just change pivot feet and walk hey, two look or over three times. <laughs> it's the craziest dynamic, but at the same time, I would not leave an, a a successful. NBA situation to step back into this what is the wild wild west of college mm-hmm. sports right now what blanket also says unless the NBA is telling you to leave I don't think the Bulls are forcing Billy Donovan out I don't think that front office knows what it's doing it seems like there's no plan in Chicago right now good point I don't, know. I, I don't who to sign who to trade who, yeah where, where who's our mainstay do we like Zach Levine don't we you know what I mean uh is the Rosen good enough? I mean Fooch? I don't think they know no. yeah I don't think Good stuff. We'll throw it to break here, get you to old school here in just a second. We are going to have to talk NBA at some point this week, Shrek, coming down to the last week. Yeah. Boston's been dominant, but I don't think either of us trust him right now. Yeah. Can 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 the six seeds hold on to their mm. position? Who's number one Who's in the West? on the way out? Yeah. Who can sneak in? There's mm. a lot of, there's some stories out there now. There do be. Stories. Stay tuned. We'll hit that later in the week here during On the Block. He's Strick. I'm Austin. Appreciate you tuning in. Big thanks to Nebco for their sponsorship of the show. If you're looking for a new career, start yours today at nebcoinc.com. Big thanks to Delco Dave swinging by with the Philly cheesesteaks, the chips, the birch beer. Really appreciate him as always. For Strick, I'm Austin. Old school. Jay Foreman coming up next.
Hi, this is State Senator Carolyn Bozin. As a state senator, wife, and mom, I believe Lincoln is a great place to work and raise a family. My husband Reggie and I are local family business owners and actively involved in our community. Last year, I voted for the largest property tax relief package in Nebraska history. Property tax relief is important to every family, and I will continue to deliver more property tax relief to working families. This is Carolyn Bozin, and I am asking for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Bozin for Legislature. Hi, I'm Senator Bo Ballard. I was born and raised in Lancaster County, learning the value of hard work and grit at a young age. I built my own company, creating jobs right here in our community. I know that families and businesses in our community need lower taxes, lower cost of health care, and a great education. That's why, as your senator, I helped pass the largest tax cut and made the most significant investment in education in Nebraska history and worked to reduce the cost of health care. I'm Senator Bo Ballard, and I humbly ask for your vote on May 14th. Paid for by Ballard for Nebraska. Clothes dryer not drying like it should could be your dryer vent. Call Bryant for a professional cleaning. 467-1111. Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. 93.7 The Ticket. Fox KFXL Weather. Brought to you by Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. Your Lincoln forecast for today. Expecting mainly sunny skies. And it will be a little breezy, but mild with a high around 67. Tonight, mainly clear with a light breeze. A little around 36. And tomorrow, we'll see a lot of sunshine and calm winds. Nothing high around 69. Meteorologist Kyle Clutter for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Community means something different to everyone, but for me, it means cheering on those around you during the